Every so often, the world produces an individual who is profoundly gifted in multiple areas and makes rare contributions in those areas. A disproportionate amount of what we understand about the world comes from such people. One of those people was 17th century Frenchman René Descartes. His profound discoveries and ideas were limited to philosophy, mathematics, and science. I say limited because we lost out on other profound discoveries of his. I'll discuss why down below. He was a major contributor to the scientific revolution and a major influencer to the writers and thinkers of the Age of Reason or Enlightenment in the 17th and 18th century Europe. I'll list a video below I have done before of the Age of Reason or Enlightenment. This had a huge influence on the ideas of the American Constitution. Descartes is known as the father of many things, including the father of modern philosophy, the father of analytical geometry, the father of modern medicine, and other things. Being a scientist or intellectual in much of history and many places has been exceptionally dangerous. They were often condemned and sentenced to death. A significant part of populations do not want advances in understanding, but prefer instead for things to remain the same. And this view is often shared by the political system. Much of what René wrote he would not publish, or at times he would not even put his thoughts down on paper. In 1633, Descartes was about to publish his beliefs on heliocentralism, which is the belief that the sun is the center of the solar system. Before he could do that, Galileo Galilei was investigated by the Inquisition, then prosecuted. Galileo was sentenced to indefinite imprisonment and suspected heresy, in and remained under house arrest until he died 11 years later in 1642. Lucilio Benini faced an even harsher sentence, also by the investigations of the Inquisition. Lucilio believed natural laws governed the universe and theorized about biological evolution. Note this was more than two centuries before Charles Darwin. In 1619, Lucilio had his tongue cut out, then was strangled at the stake, and his body was burned to ashes. The Inquisition was formed to bring to trials crimes of heresy or questioning any doctrine of the Catholic Church. Heresy could be from reading banned books, questioning society's scientific beliefs, and or practicing any religion outside of Catholicism. It could also be from speaking in any way against the church by associating with any other heretics and any violation of church doctrine or God's laws, whether intentional or unintentional. Common estimates have it that 30,000 to 300,000 were killed by this system. Some believe millions were killed. In addition to this, some of the rulers of the Catholic countries had large numbers killed without having gone through the process of inquisition, but for the same reasons. Investigations and accusations were conducted by the inquisition and sentencing was carried out by the court systems. Descartes would spend most of his adult life in the Netherlands, which at the time was in the middle of its golden age. As a Protestant country, it was mostly outside the jurisdiction of the Inquisition. However, even there, Descartes was quite careful and limited in what he published or in publicly sharing his ideas. One of my fascinations is in understanding the processes of those with the greatest of minds. What is it that they did that set them apart? I believe if we use their processes, had their discipline, and had their influences, then we 
would mostly be the same. Rene Descartes' productivity can be attributed to his disciplined lifestyle, his meticulous methods, and his unwavering commitment to the pursuit of knowledge. His habits of deep work sessions, note-taking, questioning, meditation, collaboration, and physical exercise all contributed. He believed that a healthy body supported a sharp mind. His form of meditation would be to stay on a subject and explore the various possibilities of it. He would use reason to question it and look for answers. His meditations were not for relaxation, but critical analysis and to challenge even his discoveries. Rene believed it would give him a better understanding of his thoughts, feelings, and motivations. This was done through probing questions, then a careful look for biases and errors in reasoning. He would look for different perspectives to challenge his beliefs, allowing thoughts to arise without judgment, to rise and fall without getting tangled in them. His mental processes were recorded while moving through meditation. He would look for any alternative perspectives that had not been considered. Descartes would organize his thoughts into notes, creating categories and subcategories. He would regularly review, update, and cross-reference his notes, breaking a problem down into what he felt were the smallest parts, then removing any parts he felt there was doubt. Descartes would move in his professional life around Europe, living in remote and secluded areas so he could be alone and undisturbed in his thoughts and problem solving. The following is a chronology of his life, writings, discoveries, and creations. He was born in Touraine, France in 1596. His mother died soon after his birth and he was not expected to survive. He grew up with his grandmother and a wealthy family and received an exceptional education. From 1606 to 1614, he studied at a Jesuit university, beginning with a typical classical education, the study of Greek, Latin, and the various writings by the ancient Romans and Greeks. This was followed by three years of philosophy studies with a typical heavy influence from Aristotle, but also with mathematics. He commented after the completion of his studies that he had been left with great uncertainty and confusion in his mind, but noted the importance that philosophy had as a base for the other disciplines. In 1616, Descartes received a degree in canon and civil law from Poitiers. He became a lawyer which is what his father wanted, but this was short-lived. 1618 found René as a mercenary for the Dutch army and studying military engineering. In 1620, he left the army and for the next several years would travel throughout various countries of the world. The Book of the World, as he called it, he felt traveling could offer one different perspectives and from them different ways to solve problems. He intended to meet as many people of different cultures, different strata of society, and mindsets as possible. During this time, he would continue to study, let his mind wander, and contemplate epistemology, or the study and acquisition of knowledge. France declared theoretical attacks on Aristotle's works to be punishable by death, Descartes completely disagreed with Aristotle's views on science. He moved to the Protestant Netherlands in 1628. His next 20 years were spent publishing his major works that initiated a revolution in mathematics and philosophy. Descartes finished writing The World in 1633. This was published after his life, for he feared the consequences during his life. This was on the laws of motion and his belief on the universe, along with properties of light and the soul of man. Appendices on Discourse on the Method was published anonymously in 1637 because fear of persecution. These are divided into several parts. In the first part, he invented analytical geometry. 
This included the coordinate system that we use today to plot x and y. This also included the use of letters for constants and unknowns in algebraic equations. Descartes' analytical geometry was used by Newton and Leibniz to develop calculus. This also introduced the modern exponential system. The second part was the first publication of the law of refraction, which is the formula of when light or energy passes through air, water, or glass. In the fourth part, he debates for probably what he is most famous for. That is, cogito ergo sum, or I think, therefore I am. In this, he asks, what can be known of our existence? What if what is being observed or understood is only a dream? When we dream, we cannot know if it is reality or not. Perhaps you are watching this video in a dream. How do you know you are or are not? Either way, thanks for watching. Descartes states, the only thing we can know is that we are, that we exist. By 1640, he had become one of Europe's most famous philosophers and mathematicians. In 1641, he wrote Meditations on First Philosophy, told in six days by six meditations. René challenged himself in epistemology or the theory of knowledge. He looked at everything he had ever believed in. This includes going through a meditative analysis of breaking down all he knew into smaller and smaller components. He writes that we cannot trust our senses as they are obviously at times wrong. Meditations too postulates that perhaps the only thing is that nothing is certain. He acknowledges his imagination can lead him to err, so he resolves to be more careful. In Meditations 4, Descartes invited 20 or 30 of the most known theologian philosophers to comment on his meditations. He included critiques of the work by seven of these in his publication. This included Thomas Hobbes, one of the founders of modern political philosophy and author of Leviathan, which was also a major influence on the concepts of the American Constitution. In 1644, Descartes wrote Principles on Philosophy, The Laws of Physics. Isaac Newton's first law of motion is based on Descartes' theory. Newton concluded that an object at rest or in motion will not change that state or velocity unless acted upon by a force. This law then replaced text used in universities based on Aristotle's views from some 2,000 years before. In 1663, Descartes' books were prohibited in France, and King Louis XIV prohibited the teaching of his philosophy in France. Long ago, I read an account of his medical studies. At the time, I read of some sources which claimed him to be the father of modern medicine. These authors would call modern medicine Cartesian medicine, named after René. He worked on cadavers and studied such things as the brain. He found the pineal gland to be special. There are alternative thinkers and Eastern mystics today who believe the pineal gland is associated with the soul, the third eye, or higher consciousness. The medical world embraced Descartes' theory of dualism, the separation of mind from body, as it gave doctors more freedom to see medicine more scientifically, and the church then saw minds as being under their realm and not to be explained by science. Descartes was into the esoteric, and I am sure he kept those ideas or any findings to himself, or a select few for fear of repercussions from the church. 
I believe there were other great discoveries that Descartes made, but the world will never know. Others have hinted at this in vague terms. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.